Jumping into the number five spot of the best budget gaming mice in 2024 is the Cooler Master MM711, coming in at a price tag of $24.95. If at any point during the video you want to check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But the MM711 is my favorite and best pick for a gaming mouse under 30 bucks. This uses the Pixart 3389 sensor, which is a very reliable and great high-end sensor. This has a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, up to 16,000 DPI, 400 IPS, and 50 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is fantastic, especially for the price point, being a great shape for all grips. This has a cutout design, but with the Cooler Master logo instead of like your traditional honeycomb pattern, which I really appreciate. It just makes this feel a little bit more unique which you don't typically get at this price point. It's well put together and looks absolutely awesome. For color options, there's actually quite a few. You have matte black, matte white, glossy white, and a wilderness green. For the skates, these use virgin grade PTFE with one large skate in the front and then two smaller skates in the bottom corners. This design does cause some drag, but it's definitely not unusable and it's very, very manageable. For the cable, it's pretty much classic ultralight cable. It's lightweight. If you keep some slack on it, it feels wireless. For switches, these are using Omron switches, which feel great here. Not too light, not too heavy. Basically, everyone will like these. They also have a pretty good sound. For programmable buttons, there are seven. You can customize these with Cooler Master's Master Plus software. You have the left click button that cannot be programmed. So that's the only button that cannot be programmed. But the two buttons on the left side and the right click can be programmed in addition to the button behind the scroll wheel, as well as the up and down scrolls and the middle scroll click, which are considered buttons. So really you have much less than seven buttons, but that's not really what this mouse is about. For the scroll wheel here, it is tactile and it's not mushy feeling. It's just right for playing games, especially like FPS style games. For the weight, this comes in at 60 grams, which everything considered, this is a really, really good pack for the price. Now, on top of all of that, to finish it off, the RGB is actually really, really good. Even with that weight, this manages to have a lot of RGB, both on the wheel and this massive diffuse section under the cutouts, which just looks really, really good. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot. And that is the Damo Shark M3, coming in at a price tag of $44.99. This uses the 3395 sensor, hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, up to 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS, and 50 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is pretty solid with no rattles and only a very, very slight creak on the upper left and a teeny bit of flex if you grab it extremely hard. This obviously might vary from unit to unit, but that's what was on mine. For the shape and size, this is very similar to the G Pro X Superlight, but it is a bit wider with more of a flat palm bump and indents on the left and right click. This has a smooth texture with the Damo Shark logo on the front, which I honestly don't love, but you know, not a biggest deal with mice. Overall, it's basic and a little generic, but it works. For color options, you can get this in black, pink, or white. Now, the skates here are 100% PTFE with one around the sensor and then one in each corner. Now, this design does cause some drag or scratchiness, especially when moving to the left or right, but they're still much smoother than something like the Logitech G305 Lightspeed. So in this price point, this is still very good. Now, this mouse actually replaces the G305 Lightspeed as I think this is a little bit better because this is is wireless with either Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, or obviously you can use it wired with a USB type C. You'd also get pretty good battery life here at 83 hours. Now switches here use the GM 8.0 Black Mamba micro switches. They're nice, but compared to more name brand mices, they just fall a little bit short. They're a little bit heavy, but overall they're still very good. And if you're most likely in this segment of price point, you're probably gonna be very happy with this. Now for programmable buttons, this is pretty much standard for like a more FPS lightweight style mouse. You're gonna get those two side buttons for programmable buttons, but that's pretty much it. Now for the scroll wheel, it is on the heavier side and it's also very low profile. I don't mind it being on the heavier side, but I definitely don't like it as low as it is. I do wish it was raised up a little bit. The tactile bumps are decent, but they do have some mushiness to them. That being said, it's a better scroll wheel than the number three spot, so there is something to be said for that. Now, for weight, this was really the reason that this won over the G305 Lightspeed, and this thing only comes in at 58 grams for the price and all the other specs. This just beats the G305 Lightspeed, especially if you want a budget 
wireless gaming mouse. Now for RGB, there is no RGB here, but with that, let's move on to the number three spot. And this is the HyperX Pulsefire Haste. This thing retails for $49.99, but is pretty consistently on sale for $39.97, which is what it currently is at the time of filming, which is a fantastic price for this mouse. This uses the 3335 sensor. And like I've mentioned before, this sensor has some implementation problems from other companies, but HyperX and all the name brand companies implemented this just right. So there's no problems with the sensor and it's a very good sensor overall. This is a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 16,000 DPI, 450 IPS and 40 Gs of acceleration. For the build quality, it's built well and is honestly just a plain downright good looking gaming mouse for the price. This uses hexagon cutouts, both on the palm areas as well as the beginning of the left and right click, which I think looks awesome. The glossy accents all over the mouse really make it stand out and make it seem a little bit more special. And overall for being a symmetrical ambi mouse, this is ergonomic feeling as the left and right clicks have dips for your fingers and then pair that with the texture of this mouse, which is definitely more of a grippy texture, excluding those glossy accents. It's a very, very nice mouse in the hand. For color options, you can get this either black or black and yellow. Now for skates, this is 100% PTFE. And my least favorite part about this mouse are the skates. There's four small skates in each corner and because of their orientation and their design, there is drag in both vertical and horizontal movements. However, it's definitely not unplayable or offensively bad. And this is definitely not a deal breaker for this, but in the future, this could be upgraded with some custom skates. Now for the cable, this uses an ultralight design like everyone else with wired mice. So if you do keep some slack on it, it feels wireless. For switches, these are using the TT Golden Micro switches and it has a really nice feel. It feels solid and doesn't feel like there's a huge amount of travel. And a plus is that it sounds pretty nice. For programmable buttons, there are six, technically six, total. Four out of the six buttons are fully customizable. However, the left and right click can only be switched between themselves. You can switch them between themselves, right? Yeah. So the two buttons on the left side, the middle click of the scroll wheel and the button behind the scroll wheel can all be programmed to whatever you want. But let's talk about the scroll wheel itself. It has tactile bumps, but they are kind of vague and it's a little bit more like lighter and mix that with the vagueness. It's just not the best experience, but definitely not the worst at all. For weight, this is great. Coming in at 59 grams, this is great for FPS games or those that like a lighter feel and then pair that with the grippiness. It's great for liftoffs. It's just a good mouse overall. Now for RGB, there's not much. It's only on the scroll wheel, but in HyperX fashion, it's very, very bright and saturated. So that's pretty sweet. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, the Razer Basilisk V3. This has an insane price. They've dropped it substantially over time with this only coming in at $49.90. Now this isn't like a super fast mouse. All the other mice on the list are better for like FPS games, but if you want a customizable mouse that's pretty much good at everything, this is an insane value in 2024. This uses the Razer Focus Plus optical sensor, which is fantastic for all sorts of gaming, including fast paced gaming. This is a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS and 50 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is amazing. Definitely the best on any budget mouse and for sure the best in this price point, you're not gonna beat that. It is definitely a larger mouse as far as gaming mice go. This is definitely a ergonomic mouse. If you're getting this mouse, you're probably a palm gripper, but this has a large thumb grip. And if you're used to something like the Logitech G502, this is basically that mouse, but upgraded and better in basically every way. For my hand and grip size, which is pretty much average and a palm grip, this feels amazing to use for long gaming sessions. It has injection molding sides that fit my hand nicely and just have a nice grippy texture that's also kind of a little bit soft. It's very, very nice and premium feeling. For the color here, you get black, but the flip side of that is you have a freaking ton of RGB, so you kind of have that to customize your color. For skates here, these are PTFE with two small skates on the top, one skate on the bottom and one underneath the thumb rest. It glides very, very well with no pulling or dragging. This is super, super smooth and definitely not what you'd expect when just looking at this mouse visually, but it's impressive. The cable here is Razer Speedflex cable. So even though this is a bigger mouse, they still use like an ultralight cable design, which is really, really nice. This feels wireless if you keep some slack on it. For the switches, these use Razer's Gen 2 optical switches. So again, they feel very similar to the Gen 3s and in most ways, they're basically identical, making for this have a very satisfying 
tactile click. Now for programmable buttons, that's where if you really want programmable buttons, this mouse absolutely rocks it. You have a ton, 13 total programmable buttons. There are three on the left side of the mouse, two behind the scroll wheel. There are then the left and right clicks as well as the programmable scroll wheel that can be clicked to the left and right center as well as obviously the normal up and down scroll. And because one of those programmable buttons is a sniper paddle, which means you can momentarily while you're holding that paddle, decrease your DPI or you can change it to whatever you want. But if you wanna use it as a sniper paddle, that's what it does. And in a lot of games like Hell Let Loose, Insurgency Sandstorm, Squad, games that are a little bit slower, but sometimes you'll sit in one position for 10, 15 minutes at a time, this mouse absolutely rocks. It is ultra customizable and I love love that. Now the scroll wheel here feels great. It is tactile. It feels fantastic and has the ability to switch between free wheel. So if you don't want those tactile bumps, then you can switch to that. But these are really, really nice tactile bumps in between. They're very, very precise and great for precision gaming. Now the weight here, while it sounds like a lot at 101 grams, is still far less than the Logitech G502. But this really comes down to personal preference and DPI. If you have a higher DPI, then having a lightweight mouse doesn't really matter and a heavier mouse actually is better. Now to finish it off, the RGB is absolutely unreal real here. You have basically 360 degree lighting around the base of it. You have the Razer logo and then the wheel itself. It looks absolutely crazy at night. I love the RGB here. Now, before we move on to the number one spot, we have an honorable mention. And this is the Attack Shark X3 coming in at a price tag of $43.99. The reason this is an honorable mention is that I have heard about some tracking dropping here and there for some people. I never had this problem, but nonetheless, that's why it's not fully on the list. So take that into consideration. This uses a 3395 Five sensor. And as you can see, this is a clone of the G Pro X Superlight. Now, I personally don't love the idea of getting a clone of the Superlight. I think it's a little bit tacky to get something that looks like that. But at the same time, I can't argue with the fact that this is a good mouse for the price. Now, this is like the G Pro X Superlight, but a little bit smaller. Not tiny, but just a little bit smaller. However, the shape is literally like a carbon copy. So the pro here is that the G Pro X Superlight has a great shape that basically everyone loves and you're going to get basically down here but a little bit smaller which is definitely a big pro for connectivity this is also wireless with either bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz usb dongle for switches these are the kale black mamba gm 8.0 switches now the last thing with this mouse is the weight this comes in at only 49 grams making this the lightest mouse on the list some might like it some might not that's definitely an extremely light mouse so especially if you're a very very low dpi player that's something you might appreciate for a very decent price. But with that, jumping on to the number one best budget mouse of 2024, and this is the Razer Cobra, coming in at a price tag of $39.99. This is an awesome mouse for the money. This is using Razer's 8500 DPI optical sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, obviously 8500 DPI, 300 IPS, and 35 Gs of acceleration. Build quality here is extremely solid with no creaks or rattles. A lot of you always comment on about how I'm talking about Razer's build quality being so good. When a lot of you are saying it's bad, it's not two years ago anymore. Razer has gotten so much better with their build quality. As for shape, this is an ambi design with a more narrow shape and mild palm bump that I really enjoy. It's great if you have medium to small sized hands and use a palm or claw grip. There are indents on the left and right clicks for your fingertips to sit comfortably nice glossy accents throughout, and this has a nice grippy texture. Overall, it is really impressive for the price tag. This is one of my favorite budget mice is out there. For color options, you get black and that's it and you're gonna be happy with that. For skates here, this is virgin grade PTFE with one log skinny skate at the top, one around the sensor, and then one large skate at the bottom. This design they did so, so right. There is no noticeable scratchiness or drag with this skate design. They did it really, really well. For the cable, this is what Razer calls their SpeedFlex cable, and I've never had a problem with SpeedFlex cables. If you keep some slack on it, like every other lightweight cable, it's gonna feel wireless. Now for the switches, these are Razer's Gen 3 optical switches. This is really where you get kind of the trickle down effect. These switches are really nice. They put them on some of Razer's nicest mice, but you're getting these in this mouse. So that's a pretty sweet deal. These are very similar to the Gen 2 optical switches, which I really enjoyed. These have very satisfying clicks with a deeper sound than the Gen 2s, and they have a comfortable weight to them. These are just right. I think for a lot of people, if you're not gonna go with something like BenQ, which again, is most likely gonna be in a much higher price point, or something like the new Logitech G Pro X Super Lite 2, which have like the best clicks in the world, it's insane to get these switches 
at this price. For programmable buttons, again, you get your standard programmable buttons with two extra side buttons on the left side, and this is fully customizable in Razer Synapse. The scroll wheel here is all right. It has more of a stealth protrusion, so a little bit more low profile, and the tactile bumps here are a bit mushy. However, the bumps are definitely more tactile than the HyperX, so it's just a good scroll wheel. But the weight is just right here at 58 grams. Now for RGB, you do get that on this mouse with everything else you get, which I think is pretty awesome. Having the Razer logo lit up and some like ambient lighting on the back of the mouse, which looks great and is something that you can't actually see. If you look around the mouse with the RGB off, you will not be able to see any like white, opaque plastic that you would expect RGB to come through. You cannot see anything and I think that's very cool. Overall, this is an extremely attractive and polished product for the price. But again, if you want to check out any of the five gaming mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.